she tells us some of the stuff and she tells us to answer them and then she sends us to our tables <laughs> and we have to do some math stuff. And the math stuff they do ensures that pupils at Eleanor Palmer Primary School in North London achieve well above average results. Over four programmes, we're looking at how they teach mathematics across Key Stage 2. Head teacher Kate Froude is also the maths coordinator and she has a clear vision of what she expects. I think there are a few abiding principles that are clear, but they're clear in our approach to teaching and learning, which is that you're teaching children, not a subject, so you know those children and what, how they respond as individuals. You are enthusiastic, you put some thought and planning into the lesson rather than just you know turn over and do the next page, that you're differentiating. Um, that you are questioning, questioning, questioning. I mean, the level of a lesson just raises so much when you ask the right questions. Ten, add three, take away one. This <laughs> is year three, taught by Rosalind Karen. Um, is it um, 11? Oh, I so mean, ten. 12. Oh, yes, you corrected yourself. Yeah. Ten, <laughs> add three is 13, take away one is 12. Two more sums coming up. Amelia, I saw you got that so fast. I just, in the first term, just really focus on num just number, number, number as much as possible. You know, they, they generally have a quite a solid understanding of number bonds to ten, and it's really just then teaching them that when they know that, they can pretty much know so many things. And when they know their two times table, they can know their four times table and their eight times table, and when they know their threes, they know their sixes. So it's just getting what they know, and they've just become secure with... Three adds to two equals five. So do you remember, we can put those numbers in our diamond fact family and we know four sums from that. What do we know, Caitlin? We know that five adds Oh, careful. Three. We know... Three add five, two equals five. And we know... Five add two equals... Oh, who can help her out? Cheryl. Is it five take away three makes two? Oh, brilliant. So do you remember, we know two adding sums and two take away. We know three add two is five, and we know two add three is five, and Cheryl's just told me five take away two is three, and we also know that five take away three is, is two. So, you're going to see how many fat families you can see on the board. We'll find out in there. So as soon as you get a pen, you can start. As soon as you get a board. Um, when five and We join it to the ten, couldn't we? Because what do four and six make? Ten. Brilliant. I did three. Um, fifteen. Okay. Who can tell me a group of numbers that go together? Ten. Malachi. Ten and twenty is thirty. Fantastic. So I can make a chain between ten, twenty, and thirty. Ten, twenty, and thirty. Leah, tell me one of yours. Fifteen and five is twenty. Fifteen and five and twenty. Dante, can you tell me? Fourteen and six is twenty. I love that. You've used two new numbers. Fourteen and six and twenty. Can you tell me a subtraction sum with those three numbers, Dante? Twenty take away six is fourteen. Brilliant boy. One of the most important things is for them to understand about um, links between different operations as well as all the links between numbers and so I really wanted them to understand that if they knew um, how to add, they knew their number ones to 10 and they know how to um, number facts to 10 then they can do to 20 by sort of repeating what they know already. Can you make all the numbers 1 to 20 using only 2, 3 plus take away and equals? Can anybody tell me straight away how I can make number one. How can I make number one only using two, three, plus and minus? Leah? Three take away two. Right, I can make one by doing three take away two, and I can just so I'm certain I can write equals one. Are there any numbers that I don't actually have to do any adding or taking away? Marcello? Two and three. Yeah, two and three. So actually, I can do those straight away. I could do two and I can do three. Who can tell me how I would make four? Hannah. Two and two. 
two add two is quite easy, isn't it, really? Do you think it's going to get harder? Yeah. yeah. What's, when, when is it going to get harder? When you're about, like, up to, up to 10 or 15 or, or 17. Right. So the children get to work making numbers up to 20 from different pairs of single-digit numbers, such as two and three, five and three, or two and four, using just addition and subtraction. Two equals six. I know. Add two. Add two. Five plus five equals six. What's double two? Is that our answer? So we've got our fat family, and we've got 15, and we're missing two numbers. Which two numbers could we use to add up to 15? Yes, five. Add. Something add five makes 15. I think one of the problems is sometimes children come into year three and they don't understand number, they don't understand what 100 is or they don't have a clue about how to times and that's you really have to take those children right back to the start and there's no point in them doing the times tables if they don't know how to count to 20 or what 100 looks like or what 100 is. So it's some children, you have to, they won't maybe get quite to that stage in year three, so you just have to really keep going over the foundations or the building blocks of maths. Leah has worked brilliantly and she's got all the way up to 12. And now she's stuck on 13. Now, without e me even writing in the sums, can anyone suggest to Leah how she might make 13? Um, five add three is, no, three add two is five, then another three add two is ten, then um, add three is thirteen. Excellent. Well done, Mia. So, Leah, if you know how to make ten, then you know how to make thirteen. OK, put your hands up if you enjoyed that investigation. Hands up. Fred, what was good about it? You found out lots of new sums because when you added the so, what? So you found out you can make lots and lots of numbers with only... How many numbers were you using? Two. Only two numbers, right. Who can tell me which numbers can you see you can make already with two and four? Oh, hey, Caitlin, hands shut up, um, yes. Two add two is four. Two add two is four, yeah. And just two is two, isn't yes. it? Gabe. You can make six by doing two and four. You can do two add four to make six. Who can tell me something else I can make? You can, you can make any even number. Oh, right. Can we see as well? Mine, she's just spotted. It's miss one, do one, miss one, do one, miss one, do one. Benjamin, which numbers am I able to make? All of the... You know, the three, and not be able to make the five, not the seven, not the nine, not the eleven, not the So 13. can you tell me which numbers at not, the end not, I'm going to be able to make? Uh, not the, you're, you're going to be able to make 20. Right. Because you just go through, through 9, 11, 13, So which numbers 15, can't I make? They've all got something 19, in common. Uh, which numbers uh, can't I make, Lily? They're all odd numbers which you can't make and all even numbers that you can make. Why do you think that is? What's special about the two numbers I'm using? Maybe because so, they're even. Because the numbers in the question are even. Maybe that's why we can only make even numbers. You all are so good at adding and taking away that actually you have proved that you can do so many sums with quite tricky numbers. Can anyone so what is the head teacher's role in maintaining standards in the school? I really do think as coordinator, which I ultimately am, you do have a responsibility for inspiring and sharing ideas. But whenever we share ideas, We'll spend a lot of time, you know, what would you ask, what would you ask, how could you develop that, how could you probe, what next? So questions, you know, getting the teachers better and better at asking questions. Why do you think that is? And I, I am aware that, you know, that the ability to question, to plan questions and to spontaneously question is to do with subject knowledge. But I've seen colleagues in this school and in other schools I've worked in really develop as their confidence develops and as their own personal understanding develops and a lot of them have commented that their own maths teaching was not about enjoying it and was not about understanding it and as they as teachers have begun to enjoy and understand it more and have developed their repertoire of questions their, their lessons improve. Which two numbers did you add first, Amber? 
As part of her role, head teacher Kate Frude regularly observes classroom teaching. This is another of Rosalind Caron's Year 3 maths lessons. I've got a question for you, Fawn. It's quite hard. If other groups put their cards in different places, will they still get the same big total? Will they? The pupils are making combinations of numbers in a triangle and exploring the totals they get. Nine, so let's do nine quickly there. Ros also has two teaching assistants in the room. What could they do? They're saying, oh, we haven't added it up yet. Where would you, if you were adding these up, what would you do first? During this Three session, what exactly is right. Kate looking Who for? They're fantastically motivated, that's great. And they're, right. and they're working well in teams. But the sort of thing I'd like to post to Ros is afterwards, just really for discussion, not as a criticism, is arithmetic error in these things because I just left this group and they just added it all. So where does that leave them? Because actually you need to get the sums right to see the maths as that group have done. So just a discussion to have, not criticism, but you know, for her to reflect about how she's going to deal with independent groups making, getting sums wrong, I think. Right, why does it make but, the number um, bigger the questioning's the biggest numbers in the corners? Numbers are easy, but she's taught, reminded them of strategies. But in terms of thinking and reasoning... They do join up, but so what? Who can make the lowest total in the middle? Quick, who's going to make the lowest? How are you going to make the lowest? Afterwards, Kate, Roz and her teaching assistants get together for feedback on the lesson. So in terms of a lesson that combined core number skills with developing reasoning and all that, I thought it went. I thought that was. I thought that was really, really good, and I thought they progressed. Um, and the pitch and the challenge was great. I thought it was right. First thing to say to you, though, and it's not a criticism. It's a kind of ooh is. What happened quite quickly in the lesson was they got their sums wrong. What do you do in those lessons? Because if they get the sums wrong, then it's going to affect what? the whole. Yeah. So in a way, the lesson is about rehearsing yeah. mental addition, but that's just something to think about, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. How you guard against that, because you can't possibly run around the class yeah, and check it. Yeah. And something that I always observe when I watch lessons with, with teaching assistants is that dependency. Yeah. And, and I think we just, what do you do about that? Because you, they need you, okay. but then if they learn to depend on you, where's the independence? And even if I don't know what you do about that. Even yeah. if they work on their own, they, they, can't, they sort of can't stay on task, they no, start drawing. But it's something we've got to always be yeah. aware of. Otherwise, if you don't give them... Is it, it's, it's, it's the old chestnut with any kind of teaching assistant support statement is. Mm -hmm. Whatever. That, that kind of learned dependency becomes mm -hmm. counterproductive mm -hmm. and they think they can't do anything. They just, it's out of their comfort zone, I guess. Mm -hmm. The one thing I still perhaps didn't see, and, and we've got to keep going back to it, is pen in hand... Yeah. annotate because you know you did sit with a lot of kids you really sat with them as I did and it would be nice to scribble on their yeah, sheets no. so all of you pen in hand okay, yeah, pen round neck whatever because uh, I'd much rather see a comment like well done Benjamin you did these first two independently big smiley face yeah. than some irrelevant tick sheet yeah. completed later that kind of annotation so that's just something but I thought it was great and I loved it and they loved it and I think you worked really well as a team no, it